Um, now, the body itself has often been treated as the lesser part and um, that the soul and the spirit are the are higher realms i don't believe that is the case because i believe god made us whole so one is not more important than the other they all are equally important but they have different functions mm -hmm. so the body needs to be treated with honor and respect as a temple if you like you know the temple of the holy spirit so we need to look after ourselves and we need to be aware of um the signs that our body may be giving um and they may be physical signs in that we need to have enough sleep enough rest enough exercise we need to eat the right foods and our body may be communicating to us that we are lethargic or you know not not feeling healthy not feeling energized and therefore that is an indication that we need to to change our lifestyle and maybe need to change the way in which we look after ourselves Uh, I was just uh, wondering, uh, when we talk about, you know, the body and soul being cleansed, does the spirit need to be cleansed? Um, no. Spirit gateways? No. What, what needs to happen is the spirit needs to be developed. We need to understand how the spirit works. So the functions of the spirit that are, are often seen in the, through the gateways, like reverence, fear of the Lord, and those type of experiences worship um, there's there's you know a number of uh, of gateways there um are designed to function with the soul and the body they're not supposed to be independent but of course because the spirit and soul were separated in the sense of disconnected um then we've not learned to to function that way now some people um when they discover spirituality uh, and their relationship with god their spirit begins to function but because we've not been taught how to function that way uh, generally we, we need to learn and so engaging the different gateways of the spirit and what i did was walk through them with jesus and ask him to help me understand how they worked and you know what are the uh, the functions of my spirit we think of them as gateways because gateways help us understand there's entrance points and flow through them but they're really more about spiritual abilities that we have or functions of the spirit that need to be activated now they get activated um, as the holy spirit flows through them and when we are then one spirit with the holy spirit joined to the lord then they begin to be activated but we need to build our spirit because we've not used it um, we've not connected to it in, a, in that sort of way uh, some people do instinctively operate some ways like that they just seem to function that way but most people don't so it's lear it's a learning process and um, the more we focus on building our spirit the more the stronger our spiritual abilities become and we can then learn to sense and feel through the spirit, not just through the physical senses or even through the emotions. So our spirit becomes active and our spirit begins to expand and grow and increase in its in abilities to function that way. And then as we become more whole, the spirit and soul body function together and work together seamlessly. But there's often a, a process to to go where spirit and soul need separating and reintegrating in that the soul often is connected to the spirit from the outside in and it draws life from the spirit because if we didn't have a spirit we would not live um you know so it's important that our spirit is there uh but obviously the soul has not really been subject to the spirit or the spirit has not had um the ability is functioning in such a way when we don't know who we are, you know, and particularly before we discover um, our identity in Christ, then we often operate as if that we don't have a spirit. Um, the soul is the predominant force in our life <clears throat> and the soul is the uh, learning area of our, our being where we have learned to understand life from everything that flows from the outside in. So through the physical senses, 
we've heard and seen and experienced life and that has shaped our soul and therefore our soul then functions out of the experiences that we've had but draws life from the spirit but operates independently of the spirit and god um, when we become christians if you like um, then our spirit and soul become reconnected that's when the wrestling often takes place because the soul's used to being in control providing for ourselves protecting ourselves we have defense mechanisms coping mechanisms for life and then all of a sudden our spirit sort of you know comes onto the scene and the soul doesn't like letting go of control um through fear generally but the spirit as the spirit grows there's this sort of wrestling and now uh, the easier it is you know, the quicker we surrender and allow the spirit to lead um because our spirit joined to the holy spirit then can direct our lives much better than our soul can until our soul becomes cleansed and integrated and whole so then if jesus separates soul and spirit and reintegrates us then our spirit is connected to our soul from the inside out so everything flows from the inside out and then we discern what's around us in the world from the spiritual senses first before the physical uh, and the emotional senses yeah so we don't operate out of memory we operate out of instinct so our spirit instinctively enables us to know and feel and sense what's going on around us you know so for that sense you know it's important that we go through that process and we we surrender our soul's control um, the spirit and soul become integrated and function together um, and then we can operate in a completely different way um, but the spirit itself is not damaged or impure it's just not connected <clears throat> you know our spirit really has never been disconnected from god but our soul has been um and then when we realize that god is in us and we open that first love gate in our spirit we allow god to flow into us to engage spirit soul body then we begin to engage relationally with god and then that really begins to give us our identity most people get their identity from what they're doing in the world um rather than or from their past experiences rather than who god says they are now your spirit knows who you are um because your origin was always in god in the spirit and your spirit existed before your body and soul so it pre-existed before it came into the body but when it did it came into a state of disconnection um, and um, god is looking to reveal himself in a way that reconnects us makes us whole brings us back into union with him union with spirit soul and body and then everything begins to flow rivers of living water abundant life flows from the inside out um, and we can then live within what's um, an inner experience of our life shapes our outer experience rather than our outer experience shaping our inner experience. You know, and I think that um, is what God wants to, us to happen. So there are things we can do in, you know, in building our spirit, if you like, or increasing our spiritual capacity is is actually focusing on our spiritual senses rather than primarily on our physical and soul senses and that is a meditative exercise so we meditate on the spirit and the abilities of the spirit and the senses of the spirit and then those those senses grow and they they develop and then we are intuitively operating spiritually rather than uh, cognitively most of the time um, but it is you know a process and and um some people say oh the spirit was damaged i don't believe that the spirit has ever been damaged or has ever had anything occupying it other than god um but that doesn't mean that we function through the spirit because we're not trained and learned to function so in hebrews it talks about through practice we train our senses to discern now that can be training our actual senses both our our physical senses and our our soul senses um to be in tune with the spirit senses 
and therefore to be subject to them in that they are they carry the highest priority of understanding before our cognitive understanding and then our cognitive experiences can be shaped from the filters of our spirit so it's like if we're engaged in the spirit the spirit can filter things that are coming from the outside in and give us insight into them before the soul interprets them you know and that's really what we're looking to do um, is discern in the spirit and not just be dependent on memory or logic or reason or understanding in that way um, but it takes time to develop that because we've lived most of our lives with the soul being predominantly that which detect determines what we do in life and how we feel and how we act and, and how we think but then we need to then to develop a different framework of thinking and and acting out of our spiritual senses rather than our physical and and soul senses you know predominantly first you know but it takes a bit of time to to develop all that um yeah. so uh, along those same lines i'm i'm uh practicing um well um practicing mm -hmm. being reintegrated father has reintegrated certain parts of me and, mm. and so um i'm learning how to listen to my body more and mm -hmm. and was just wanting you to highlight you know what that what that entails you know a lot of times when you haven't really been attuned to certain things mm. yeah i'm just trying to mm. um obviously when we become whole spirit soul and body should be seamlessly integrated and really um we don't need to think about spirit soul body in the same way but when we're learning obviously it helps to understand how the body functions how the spirit functions how the soul functions and how they work together and <clears throat> so um, in terms of our body there are the five physical senses that are you know housed in our body the sight and the hearing and the taste smell touch um and that's primarily the source of information that we've received in life you know and therefore we we've, we've learned from those experiences um now the body itself has often been treated as the lesser part and that the soul and the spirit are the are higher realms i don't believe that is the case because i believe god made us whole so one is not more important than the other they all are equally important but they have different functions mm -hmm. so the body needs to be treated with honor and respect as a temple if you like you know the temple of the holy spirit so we need to look after ourselves and we need to be aware of um the signs that our body may be giving um and they may be physical signs in that we need to have enough sleep enough rest enough exercise we need to eat the right foods and our body may be communicating to us that we are lethargic or you know not not feeling healthy not feeling energized and therefore that is an indication that we need to to change our lifestyle and maybe need to change the way in which we look after ourselves and our body and our emotions are the same thing you know we need healthy emotions they're good um but they shouldn't control us and you know our emotions in our soul you know come from you know how we've experienced things in life generally but they need to work together now at the core of our body is the center of our being and that core of our body is where spirit soul and body father son and spirit are in union and most people have never learned to interact with that center. So they engage with the soul, they may engage the spirit, they may engage the body, but not our innermost being. And a lot of people would think, oh, our innermost being is our spirit. Now, our innermost being is the core where that union takes place. So within that core, we have energy gates, which are associated with the body, but are connected also with the soul and the spirit. And we need to learn to be in tune to make sure that we are energized physically, emotionally and spiritually. And that comes from the energy, which is living water, rivers of living water, which is spiritual life, the abundant life that flows out of heaven, that flows through us, 
flows into our innermost being and then needs to be used correctly. Now, most people have never been taught any of that. Most people really have never been taught that we have gateways or spiritual soul body things at all, really. But as we learn to progress in all of that, then our body becomes the energizing place within within our being that soul and spirit function together in. Um, and therefore, if we're going to be healthy, we need to listen to our body um, in different ways and communicate to our body in different ways. So I don't let my body rule me, but I do let my body inform me. Um, and therefore, I'm interested in, you know, how my body is feeling. How am I treating my body? Is my body feeling healthy, well, whole? And if I damage my body in some way, then I communicate with my body, talk to it and may apologize for it, damaging it, maybe through an accident or be not being careful, whatever. But I then work to cooperate with my body for its healing. It's repairing. Yeah, you know, the body is designed to self-repair, self-heal, to restore itself. Therefore, I can work with that. I can cooperate with that. I can energize that. And I can work with that cooperative in my cells of my body to replicate, to restore, to become whole. You know, in a sense, until that becomes my state of being. You know, when I'm when it's my state of being, then it almost functions in a automatic way in an instinctive it's programmed within my unconscious mind uh, whereas my soul functions in my subconscious mind uh, and i'm active in my conscious mind so i need that being to be programmed so i don't have to go around thinking all the time actively you know oh, i've got to do this i've got to do that i've got to because that that makes you weary and stressed it's like having the function of how I live operating internally in a state of being is then how my spirit, soul, and body can function in union together. But I do speak to my body sometimes. I'm, I'm listening to my body. I want my body to be healthy and whole. Therefore, I want to get the right amount of sleep, healthy eating not be addicted to things in my body because the body can become addicted to certain chemicals and um, certain things you can be addicted to you know all sorts of things food you know chemicals but also to the feelings of the body you know, yeah. some people are addicted to exercise because it gives endorphins off which makes them feel good you mm -hmm. know well it's okay it's designed to happen that way but not to extreme because then people are addicted to the exercise they're not just doing exercise because it's good they can't stop doing exercise because their body then becomes addicted to the release of endorphins, you know, and actually endorphins are quite similar to other, other drug chemicals that you can put in your body. Um, so you've got to be careful to manage everything in a way and not be obsessive about things to the degree that it controls what we do in life. Cause if the body is then controlling what we do, then we're de being determined by physical factors and that's not how it's designed to work it's designed to work together in a seamless way um so you know i activate the energy gates within me from the life that's in me therefore that connects me uh to all things in a holistic way so i'm connected to heaven i'm connected to the earth creation i'm connected to the emotions that bring balance and harmony to it all and then i'm also energized creatively because i'm creative made in the image of god i can also be created in, to in be able to discern to, to feel and sense things are around me um and all those things can be active um in any one time depending on what i'm doing okay. um i want all the finest physical energy that i need and i i operate on the uh, the way of thinking is if god uh, has things for me to outwork then i need all the energy to be able to do them i don't want to be doing things and running out of steam mm -hmm. i want to be energized and that is physical energy as well as emotional and spiritual energy so you know if i know i'm going to be doing physical activity 
then I will already look to make sure my my body is energized from it, from the energy which is in me. Now, I might also need to drink water if I'm working hard to replenish any water that's coming out of my body. I might need to eat something. Now, generally, I don't need to eat. Like the last few days, I've been working outside quite uh, a lot. Um, you know, I've been digging quite a lot. I've made a log store, so I've been doing a lot of physical activity. But I generated what I was going to need before at the beginning of the day. I had some breakfast and then I went to work outside um, and I didn't get tired. And I didn't need to eat in the middle of the day because, you know, that would have stopped me doing stuff. And I wanted to finish what I was doing. So I, I didn't get tired. I didn't get in any way weary. And I was able to accomplish and finish what I needed to accomplish. But I set that agenda, you know, and I proactively engaged my physical body and energized it to fulfill what I needed to do, um, you know. And today, you know, I'm not tired and my muscles don't ache, even though, you know, I dug a couple of tons of soil and the day before, you know, did a lot of making a wood store. You know, so in a sense, you know, we shouldn't just flow through life willy nilly and not actually be aware. And the body is part of that awareness and um, becoming in tuned. And I've learned that my spirit can protect my physical body from harm if I'm if I'm listening. And quite often when I'm working outside, you know, I'm using dangerous power tools, you know, I'm using tools to dig and whatever. And there are times when I get a almost advanced view of what could happen if I was to do what I was just about to do. Like if I swing the pick in that way, it's going to hit that rock and it's going to hit my foot or my leg. So I don't hit it that way. Now that happens instinctively in a microsecond, but I, I'm aware this could be dangerous. Don't do it. Now I've learned to listen to those instincts and I've trained my senses to become aware to protect me therefore to be sensitive as i'm doing things so therefore not rushing mm -hmm. if you rush doing things sometimes you can actually uh, create problems because you're trying to do it as fast as possible but that might not be as safely as possible so i tend to i don't rush and i become i'm listening so that i am protecting myself from the possibility of doing harm now it doesn't always work you know because sometimes i still you know i still don't listen you know i was i was chopping up logs with a power saw with a chainsaw this week and um i was using it correctly but i was trying to pick up the piece before the blade stopped spinning you know just a second but a second is enough to catch the blade with your hand now fortunately i wear you know cut proof gloves and different things so i didn't cause too much damage but i did take off a quarter of my nail you know because i actually or the first time i almost did it and the second time i should have learned from the first time and i didn't i didn't do it a third time um but I sort of, you know, I have to be aware, you know, you have to be aware. Um, and I think I, I, if I'm in tune and listening, then my spirit um, and my soul, because my soul can give me memory of the things I've done in the past, which were not um, good. Because I did, use, the first time I used a chainsaw, which was only a battery one and a small one, I, I wasn't really paying attention of doing it properly. And I was using it one hand. And it bounced up off a piece of wood and basically cut my finger. Fortunately, I did have thick gloves on, but it still took a chunk out of it. So I, I, you have to learn in lots of different ways to put it all together, you know, in life, really. Hi, Mike. Hi. Um, I do have a question for you. <laughs> we'll get back to you in a minute. Yeah. And um, 
I, I have at times really been at times struggling with, you know, getting certain tasks done within a certain fri time frame mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't always seem to work. And so, I mean, I've listened to your teachings and teachings of others about this, you know, that Holy Spirit can empower us in this way to accomplish things within, let's say, a limited time frame, almost miraculously, where you can get things to speed up. I could certainly use that anointing. So I'm just wondering, you know, if maybe I'm asking a bit much here, but if there are some practical steps or how is it that you go about doing this? You've often referenced, you know, how God gave you this ability to, you know, just speed through PowerPoints. <laughs> I could have certainly yeah. used that uh, yeah. at certain times in my, my work in teaching art history. Yeah. Um, so yeah, anyway, anything you have to offer there as a suggestion would be welcome. Okay. Um, in terms of expanding or contracting time to enable us to do something in a time that it wouldn't be possible to do it in normal everyday life, always functioned for me around doing that which the father was showing me he was doing or I he'd asked me to do. So I can't say I've ever done that in a in a normal setting which wasn't related to something god was calling me to do or asking me to do so i've not done it like you know oh well, i've done a day's worth of gardening in an hour or a day's worth of woodwork in an hour but i have done a day's worth of producing powerpoints or other things in an hour or less mm -hmm. because i learned to intentionally choose that i could do that and that that my the reality was that I would be able to get it done, and that's what I did. My intention was God's asked me to do this. Now God did, ex, you know, God did push the boundaries of my diary. Well, I had no choice really. If I'd said yes to everything He asked me to do, then I wouldn't have had the time to do all the other things I needed to do. So there was a sense where I needed to learn how to do that. Um, in that case because i kept saying yes and then my diary was fuller and fuller and further with engaging with people and talking with people and doing things that you know the normal two or three days that i put aside to do certain things i didn't have that so i needed to learn to do that so it was a, a necessity if you like um but i did it by intention you know it was just i choose this reality that i will be able to fulfill this within whatever time i have available and then I can't say that I noticed it didn't feel like I was doing eight hours or seven hours or whatever in the hour. Just at the end of the hour, I'd accomplished more than I knew was possible in normal in the normal scheme of things, which is what it would have been before. So normally I knew how long Now I can make efficiencies and I did learn to be more efficient. And I learned that I could do more than one PowerPoint at a time. You know and and sort of multitask a little bit better but still it wouldn't have it wouldn't have enabled me to do what i actually do so it was a choice mm -hmm. that's how i started but i but i i've never really done it in anything other than that type of setting mm -hmm. um just because it never really occurred to me that i needed to or i have no desire to because i quite enjoy you know <laughs> doing certain things and the time it takes to do them so um well, I could do it, I guess. Uh, I don't think it would be something I couldn't do, but I'd never really chosen to do it. And most of what I want to do is what I see the father doing. So my time with God, yeah, couldn't be speeded up, you know, because it was like, you know, oh, well, can I spend two hours with God and do it in 10 minutes? And, mm -hmm. and actually, that's not relational. Right. You know, so it's like you know my time with God in, in just hanging out with Him, you know, I I talked to Him about it and and had the conversation about it, and it was actually well, it's not relational to not be aware of the experience and the time, the quality time that that is me giving to God. So I never, I never even contemplated hey, great, maybe I could just have 10 minutes in the morning and that would save me two hours. 
because that would be not prioritizing my relationship with God and not enjoying the time with him in that way. Now, the, I'm not saying that you couldn't, um, it couldn't be possible. It's just I didn't feel I ever, I would want to really want to do that because I, I enjoyed the time that I spent with God in the day. Um, I didn't particularly enjoy doing PowerPoint. So, you know, being able to do better, it was fine. You know, I didn't really mind that. Um, but it was always led and directed by what the father was doing you know in my life but it but i think when i look back there was no technique that i could say okay well i'm going to expand time now i just sat down at my computer opened the powerpoints and then started working on them mm -hmm. and then you know when the time i had wow. for the meeting came i realized that i'd done you know a lot more than i would have been able to do in that natural time but i didn't i couldn't say i could discern that time was different mm -hmm. it just yeah you know, the result was different um and then that was the indication that actually i was able to do that in a time which i knew wasn't normally possible why would a christian even want to look into channeling it just does not make sense to me when i hear christians um channel or want to channel it just it seems like that would get in the way of your relationship with god um if you're saying channeling some other spirit um yes i believe so i think that, that's is that what you're saying about. i mean yeah i guess some people will talk about challenging angelic beings or whatever i've never done that and i never would do that right, Person, right. that's the way i thought i couldn't understand why anybody would want to yeah do i i'm yeah i'm not really sure a that that's what 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 would that, what benefit would that be other than a negative thing i know people channel what they call you know their spirit guides and this sort of stuff to help them but i don't think that's what god's given us angels for i don't invite an angel into my life into my spirit or soul i mean you know they are functioning outside of me because they're also they're beings they may be spiritual beings but they operate in the realm around me they don't operate in me the only place in me is for god you know and, and i in my relationship with god i don't need to channel something else i've got i've got god in me father son and spirit so why would i need something else you know so I, i'm personally that's not something i've ever done or would ever contemplate doing and on the negative side of it i know the channeling thing is very seen as very negative and i have heard people talk about you know channeling abraham or something like that and i think i'm not sure that's the right terminology i can engage with abraham you know i could engage with a cloud of witnesses i can engage with angels but that is an an, an encounter with them for a particular purpose i don't have them doing something in my life um right you don't have them talking to you yeah yeah you yeah, know like yeah. what right okay that's it that just yeah. confirms what i believe so okay yeah i i i think sometimes sometimes terminology gets used which doesn't really reflect actually what's happening but people use that terminology in a way but sometimes terminology can be quite unhelpful when it has associated associations with very negative things which are definitely not good things to do you know opening my life up to some you know demonic spirit or some angelic spirit which is you know why would i want to do that you know i don't see any point because i have god in me and i've got rivers of living water flowing in me why i want something right. else you know so it's some not something i've ever done or would contemplate doing so definitely i guess i'll just be brave enough to follow up on this this is yeah. so interesting i so agree with you mike you know i don't like that word channeling at all um but I mean, we and I really don't believe Justin would even use that term. But I remember one of his teachings, he was talking about how angels can flow into a human being and flow out. And I think he was tying this, if I'm not mistaken, to this idea of, well, I am in you, you are in me. You know, the idea that the universe almost in a sense is within the person and yeah. also without you know it so it does get a little confusing when you think yeah. of that you know yeah. 
Yeah, I understand. I mean, I mean, again, it's probably terminology. Yeah. For me, within the core of my being, within the Merkaba in the core of my being, there are portals that are connecting me to multiple realms. Therefore, they're connecting me to heaven. So in a sense, you could say that there's the connection point to heaven and other dimensions within me. And therefore, I can communicate and connect to angelic beings as well as God and well as well as other dimensional things as well from that point of communication within me. But it's not a point of access to me. You know, it's not you know, I can travel through those portals in my soul to somewhere else and engage cognitively with that place or engage with an angelic being somewhere else but i don't engage that being within me now i understand the whole thing well if we're in god and god's in me and god's everywhere then but i think it can be a, it can be a dangerous thought to to if people start to try and do that well i'm going to invite an angel to come into my being i can communicate from the core of my being with an angelic being but i don't think that my innermost being is designed for for angels to dwell there mm -hmm. it's designed for my spirit soul and body and father son and spirit to be in union there now obviously if everything's in god then okay god's in me but then that becomes really complicated and really like it can do your head in trying to well mm -hmm. how, how does that work because it doesn't work you know it doesn't work logically because how can god be in me and i in him you know, and everything being in him and everything that exists being in a created realm within him or whatever. You know, it, it sort of goes beyond the possibility for us to fully understand that because we're not God. Um, and I don't I personally don't believe that God intends angels to dwell in us. But I do believe we can communicate with angels from within and travel from within. I don't have to travel out into heaven from the outside. I used to go into that realm that way, but now I realize I'm connected to there and I dwell in that realm mm -hmm. and I dwell in multiple realms. So I don't have to travel there. I just have to shift the focus of my thinking to be there. Mm -hmm. and that is facilitated within the core of my being, mm -hmm. that connection point. But I don't, you know, it's like once you start going too far down that route, people start then to say things like, well, I'm God you know and it's like well you know the universe and I, i'm i'm you know because it, it sort of it just i think goes too far away from the center of jesus being the center of everything in terms of holding everything together creationally um, and it can go down that route and i know you know i get questions from people who, who other people are tr going that route well we're all god you know, no, I am not God. I am a son of God, and therefore I may be little G God in that mm -hmm. sense, but not I didn't create the universe. And I think, was I present in God when the universe was created? Maybe. You know, may I may have been thought in his heart at that point. I may have been something within him that is it's quite hard to really understand our origin. Mm -hmm. You know, and if if I'm I think what people are saying is if I'm part of God, therefore I must be God. You know, whereas actually God has created us and therefore we may be made of God like material spirit because God is spirit. God is light. God is love. So I may be made God like material. I may be made of light my spirit is a light being my soul is is constructed of light but my body is well it may be constructed of chem you know particles which are like particles but they are matter in the sense that they vibrate at a frequency that is solid to us um you know so i i'm I think we get we have to be careful with the terminology we use because some people won't have the maturity to understand what we're actually saying. And then that could lead them to, to go into something which could end up causing them some harm or damage. So it's just being careful. You know, I know some people say, so, I mean, I don't follow any mystical teaching, particularly Jewish mysticism, Kabbalah. And the Kabbalah suggests that you, you can create 
demons and angels from activity within you. I don't personally want to do that. I don't believe that's true, but I do believe we have the power to create because I have created some being, but I didn't create it like within me and birth it. I just called it into being. Now you could say it came from within me because it came from the thoughts, the thoughts within me, but and the intention within me, but it didn't like was in me like a demon was in me and I let it out or an angel was in me and I let it out. And I don't follow those teachings. I know Justin does. Um, therefore, he may have some way of explaining that in a way which, you know, I don't, you know. So, you know, it's not my personal experience. And I wouldn't want to be creating demons, that's for sure. And my experience of creating other beings has been as a outward expression of something that God asked me to do um, rather than, you know, it being something that was formed in me then i let it out of me and i certainly wouldn't be wanting to invite any other being in me yeah, in very that wary of that too <laughs> yeah. Yeah. very wary <laughs> and it's yeah. like you know people like justin and others may have a level of maturity that enables them to handle what they're talking about um i think a lot of other people may not and that could perhaps run them into trouble if they're not careful so be discerning about it all i think in in everything um so that we're we're not gonna do anything which in in a sense could become dangerous you know to those who are immature you know i wouldn't give a child you know you know a blowtorch you know because you know a they could set something on fire with it or they could hurt themselves so certain things maybe mature people can handle certain things in a way that others have not yet learned to do perhaps but i still you know i still doubt mm -hmm. for me why would i want a being in me within my spiritual being or body or soul you know i i, I think god's enough for me <laughs> you know plenty enough uh, without anything else so, yeah, I think it all kind of, you know, gets very confusing because, you know, there are mystical ideas, obviously, in scripture that are hard to articulate. And then now you've got the whole quantum mecha mechanics world. Right. Oh. <laughs> and so you so, sort of see this conflation of ideas that come together that can be. Eh, not too sure you know how it yeah. really all works really yeah absolutely and and ultimately if you're not too sure then you don't do it yeah you know, that's, that's the thing if you don't if you're not fully resonating with it and you're not comfortable or at peace with anything then take that as a sign that maybe that's something to avoid right now you know um and you know i don't you know I mean, I, I know a number of people, Ian Clayton being one, talks about, well, you can you can reproduce demons by your actions and then you re reproduce them. I, I Personally, I just don't relate to that. Yeah. Why would I want to? A, and well, I'm sure he wouldn't want to either or anyone else would, but it, it would therefore be a function of, well, if I act in a certain way, then I'm going to replicate that demonic force and therefore multiply them. Well, if that was the case, there would be a lot of them around, you know, probably too many. And actually, I don't believe that's what demons are. So, you know, mm -hmm. I don't think they're an expression of our inner inner desires or outward things. I think they are entities that exist. And are there are a finite number of them. I don't think we can multiply them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think, yeah, in, you know, because you know i don't think god made them in the first place so why why would we want to make them you know or why would they have the ability for us to make them just by cooperating with them on the inside you know it to me that sort of doesn't ring true i think it might be a cabalistic type of teaching i don't follow that so i'm i'm not really um believing that that's something that I would want to do or mm -hmm. actually you know can do to be honest you know i i think there are there are protections in place that 
don't allow that sort of thing to happen. But I'm not saying that we can't give them a power over us. You know, if we succumb to temptation to do certain things and we replicate that and continue, it becomes stronger in our life. You know, it has a stronger hold over us. Any addiction, you know, not addicted the first time generally you do something. You might become psychologically addicted. Physically, you're not. But it can easily become an addiction if you continue to do it. Mm -hmm. And if you give something the power over you, then you are subject to that power. Therefore, you know, we don't want to be giving power over any negative, toxic emotions, thoughts, actions or deeds. You know, stay in love and you're going to be free from a lot of that stuff. So right. I would like to ask about the concept of uh, my being. So it's it's quite new concept. I always thought that the spirit is yeah. uh, is the place, is the core of my being. So where is it? Is it the intersection between soul and spirit? Or is it the place where these living waters flow? So yeah. could you please speak a little bit into this? Uh, well, the innermost being, I used to think, well, that must be my spirit because God dwelt within my spirit within the first love area. I had to open that gate to invite God into my spirit, but he never, he didn't stop there. It went through my spirit to soul body. And then I began to realize and learn later on that the gateways of the spirit, soul and body are just the sort of foundational teaching at the, and they're not, they're not how you can represent your innermost being because they are concentric circles with one in the middle of the other where actually that's that's helpful in one way but it's limiting in another way and i think as i began to experience god's presence within me and then that began to engage my spirit soul and body I the father led me to realize that now there is a center core innermost being that is flowing from heaven. Um, and it actually my spirit, soul and body are connected there. That's where I am in union. There is a place where my spirit, my soul and body are joined, are in connection. And that is the place where ultimately I am can be in union with God. Because I can't be just in union with God in my spirit, independent of my soul and body. I can learn there. When I first opened my first love gate and I engaged God every day and I would embrace and experience God's presence, I, I grew in my relationship with God there. But at that point, my spirit and soul were still wrongly connected. So that needed to be separated and reintegrated. And then my relationship with my body was not actually as it is now. So I, I probably didn't consider my body as an equal part of my union. So I sort of didn't really think the body, you know, but then I didn't understand body energy gates and all of that. So then actually when, when I began to um, mature, God then took me from the sort of gateway diagrams of, three concentric circles into a different way of looking at it um and it's hard to describe because we all like a picture to help us understand something um i guess in one way the best way of looking at it would be if you had three circles and they overlapped and the overlap in the center is where the core of my being is and that is spirit soul and body and that is the place where my spirit is connected to heaven or the fl flow of life and god dwells within there um when i have come to a point of union but i wasn't in a point of union early on in my journey so god dwelt within my spirit started to engage my soul and then when I then got my spirit and soul, you know, sorted out, if you like, and God reintegrated me and made me more whole, the body became then more important to that because I then could see I could expand my spirit uh, outside my body. So things could flow. And then I asked the question, well, where are they flowing from? How does my spirit 
get out of my body because it's not coming through my mouth or you know so it's not a physical thing so it's a spiritual thing where rivers flow and where my spirit can expand or the boundary of it so then i asked, started to ask questions of god to say well how does this work you know how how does this flow work what happens you know and he and, and the sort of picture i got was of rivers flowing that actually sort of came together in that core and then that then it was able to energize the the physical body the emotions and the spiritual dynamic of it was all energized from that core and actually that was the union that i had in intimacy with god was in that very center core because god does not just want to engage our spirit he wants to engage spirit soul and body and so he has made us to have the capacity to be able to be in union with him within all of those three so in a sense i think that probably is a different sort of a, a way of looking at it that that core part that the spirit engages the soul the soul engages the body the spirit can engage the body but also actually they overlap and are seamlessly one within it's not a perfect diagram because then okay well how do the how do the gateways work well i guess you could you could look at them in that way each one of those could still have those gateways functioning but they actually interact in the core so i understand my soul's function in the core my spirit's function and my body functions in the core and then that actually enables me to understand the whole of life from the core of my being rather than from one independent part because if I'm only looking from my physical eyes, my body, then I'm going to see things from a frame of reference, which is what my body is going to experience. If I'm only looking at it from the soul, then I'm only going to feel it from the emotions or the senses that I have, again, learned to memory, the mind, the thoughts, the things I've learned to engage. But if I'm looking at it from all three, then I'm going to have a balanced way of, of discerning everything around me and everything that's going on. So probably that might be a better way of looking at it. And I think I might I might intent try and draw a diagram that reflects that. You know, I think I might have a whole load of diagrams which are separate. I might try and bring them together in some way. But I think it, it does because we, we do like pictures and we do like things that give us some sort of insight, you know. Um, and, you know, and therefore, you know, it, it gives you some reference point for it. So I'll see if I can I see if I can knock something up that gives me a better way of explaining how this works from this perspective. Whereas, you know, I used to think of, you know, the, the energy, the, the, the gateways as being, well, that's how it works. But it was only helping me understand spirit, soul and body. It actually isn't a good model because you then think of the spirit must be the core because that's in the center and God is in the center of that um whereas actually if god is in the center of my spirit then my spirit is connected to my soul and body then actually he can be in the center of all of it um in that union so i i'll i'll work on that actually so it's, it's a good idea yeah okay all right anyone else got anything they want to uh, yeah i i would like to ask a question yeah. Hi. um it's kind of related to um the last question that she was asking um, I've been looking at cardiognosis. Yeah. And um, how does that relate then in the whole, looking at it holistically, like what you were just saying? And what are ways that we can exercise it more so that we can um, walk in it better? Okay. Um, I mean, cardiognosis, the knowledge of the heart, is the relationship that we have heart to heart with with god father son spirit and therefore they communicate to us their thoughts their intentions their desires their emotions in in ways that we feel sense not just in this i'm not talking about the heart as the physical organ or the heart being the soul per se but the heart being more of again my innermost being where actually i can feel and sense that physically emotionally and spiritually at the same time so that means that that union within the core of my being accesses all those areas 
um, but it's a relationship. So it's not an automatic transfer of knowledge or information. It comes out of me being heart to heart, if you like. So it's me in engaging my innermost being to connect with God and connect with his thoughts and desires and act, whatever it might be, which gets communicated in a non-cognitive way. But ultimately, I begin to know what the truth is, which can become cognitive and become part of my understanding and part of my wisdom. You know, wisdom is how I can use the knowledge most effectively. Well, you know, the knowledge of the heart is, is a pure knowledge that comes from God. And it may not be able to be expressed sometimes, but felt and known um but how do i how do i express that to somebody else it's sometimes quite hard you know for, to, to express in words what's going on within within our innermost being i would say to develop it is to learn to meditate on that union and to focus on you know a picture of, like for me the embrace of heart to heart embrace because you can embrace one side of the body with somebody else and not be heart to heart or you can embrace the other part and be heart to heart so i i focus for me on the picture of i am in god's embrace and therefore his heart is being communicated to me and i think the reality of that worked in that we had much less conversations in which he told me things and much more experiences where i knew things and where I became more sensitive to those things, particularly on knowing what he was doing. Jesus only did what he saw the father doing. Well, I believe that was a heart to heart communication because he described, well, I'm in the father and the father's in me. So this relationship of I am that I am, I guess, uh, revealed to Jesus the father's heart. And therefore, then Jesus knew what to do or not do in any situation you know because he knew the father's heart and if the father changed his heart he would know because that intimacy was always there you know because there are a few indications where for whatever reason the father seemed to change his heart you know where jesus like when mary asked jesus to turn the water into the wine or to help out in the wedding he was like well why are you asking me woman it's not my time well, at that moment, he must have thought it wasn't his time and he didn't feel the father was giving him permission to do miracles yet. But all of a sudden he did the miracle. So did the father respond to Mary and then give Jesus permission by saying, it's it's my heart now, whereas it maybe it wasn't his heart before, you know, in a way that he Jesus knew. You know, and it gets a bit complicated because it's like, you know, did Jesus know everything? Well, he was also human and he seemed to indicate that actually he needed to engage to know the father's heart. But, you know, and I don't think they were ever separate, but there was a way that Jesus operated, humanly speaking, that seemed to indicate there are times where Jesus was operating in his soul like in the garden where he said, well, let this cut pass from me, you know, and that seemed to be, and he was in agony of soul so much that his body sweat drops of blood, which is, you know, sort of an extreme experience. Um, so at that point, you know, there, there seemed, that was the humanity of Jesus being expressed. Um, but, the spirit side of it still came through it was like, well not my will but yours be done you know it's like this seems to be you know and i think there's a sort of whether that it sort of expresses that jesus related to god as we could relate to god in part as well as being god which you know is obviously quite difficult to explain you know uh, and we don't fully know but what we can do is understand how it works in us and I think that's the key, practicing the embrace. And that's what I did and do is practice the embrace without the agenda. I used to come for the embrace and ask God, what are we going to do today? You know, but now I, I embrace God and it, he communicates anything or not. You know, and I don't need to ask the question 
because the question was related to, well, the priority is what we're going to do rather than the fact that we're in the embrace. So I wanted to enjoy the embrace rather than use the embrace to give me information to what I needed to do. So it became, you know, a pure motive of my embrace. Whereas I think there was a mixture of motives in the embrace when I wanted to get the information so I could make sure I did what was right. And then when I got free from any sort of that needing to be obedient to God and try and please God and all of that type of dynamic, which was an old covenant mindset, when I was free from that, I didn't need to ask the question anymore. I knew the father would share his heart with me as he chose. You know, and therefore, all I needed to do was give him the opportunity of doing it and then embrace that. Um, so I think you can practice the embrace if that's a picture that works for you or find a picture that works for you. And then it's just practice it, keep doing it until it becomes, you know, instinctively the way you live. Yeah. That's really, really helpful. Um, I have just a little another question related to that. Um, do you think that overflows into um, more discernment about the people around you, about what they may be going through, about um, just being wise around others? Like Jesus knew the heart of a lot of people. He knew what they yeah. were thinking they were doing. Does that overflow into that as well once you've I, been embracing I think it, it, it can do. Um, and I can do that, but I would never do it unless I felt it was the father's heart to do it because it, it can be, I am in sort of doing something I don't have permission to do from the person. And therefore, if I don't have permission from God, I'm not going to do it. If the person asks me then I'm not going to do it unless I've got permission from God. So I've got, I need that, that sort of way of looking at it. You know, I know I could go in a room and I could sort of, you know, engage those peoples with my spirit and, and I could discern stuff, but I wouldn't do it because I think it's basically in infringing their personal space. And, you know, and I wouldn't do that without permission from either them or both them and God. If God gave me permission and they didn't, then I would I would take that as there's a reason for him wanting me to sense and feel wh where they are. So I could maybe help or maybe empathize or, you know, in different ways. But definitely it's something you can develop and you can engage your spirit with the atmosphere and pick up the atmosphere, you know, in a room, which is usually as a result of either the people in the room and what they're giving off um externally and you can discern people's you know frequency if you like are they you know good good vibes or bad vibes and stuff you know you can you can pick up people's moods um within within a room um and you may be able to pick up the history of the room you know and discern is there something in the fabric of this space that could be affecting the atmosphere so a lot of those things are all coming from the same basic sort of functions of being able to engage the spirit soul body to in, to to discern you know and we practice training our senses to be able to discern different things so yeah definitely yeah. if you enjoy these videos would you please take a moment to like comment and subscribe it really does help thank you very much